All right. Uh, hope everybody's doing okay out there in these uh, crazy times. Just wanted to uh, give a quick overview of um, this electronic scoreboard that I've been working on. I'm giving it the name Long Ball. Kind of fits how it works. So, just get right into it here. Uh, when you first come in, you want to set up the lineups, and that's done here on the lineup card. So, um, you want to click on the year that you want first. There's not full seasons. Uh, I think I have full seasons for 76, 2016, 2018. So, uh, I don't know, we'll just pick 76, and we'll go with the Orioles. So the idea is these are your positions here. Um, you want to click on a position. Make sure you're on visiting lineup if that's the visiting team that you want. And just start populating the batting order. Click on a position and pick the player you want to be in that position. Uh, right field, we'll put uh, Reggie Jackson. And then we'll go uh, Lee May at first. We'll go with the D.H. Kenny Singleton next. Brooksy. You see it populates. Um, after that, we'll go catcher. Uh, we have left second base, Rich Dowler. Shortstop, Mark Belanger. And pitching, we'll have Jim Palmer on the mound. You can see he's a B level, and he has control. And then click on Home Team. This is where it can get you. You come in to make lineup changes. Make sure you're on the correct one and then choose what you want. And just to save time, I'm going to load a um, lineup automatically. This one auto loads 79 Pirates. And then I hit click OK to get out of there. Um, just to go back in and show you real, oh, I'll do that later. Home team, select the Pirates again. Make sure you're on the team you want to edit. And then um, say I wanted to change my DH from Phil Garner. I just click on the red X, choose the position refilling, and we'll go with Dale Vera. Okay. So to start the game, you click on the clock and you'll see that the dice are ready to go and you can roll. Uh, as far as the scoreboard goes, these little O's means they're not on base. So if they're not on base, they have a little O. And when they get on base, they'll have a 1, 2, or 3. And this is how you advance the runners if they're not automatically advances. For the most part, they'll automatically advance, but sometimes on a fielder's choice, you have to advance somebody from first to second or second to third or third to home. These areas right here are the ones that do that. Um, this is their position, their fielding level. We have um, red, yellow, and green, and then their speed, red, yellow, green. Uh, the dice rolls here, and the play result is here. Player cards are here. He's a level B, and he has K. I think there's 2K and 3K capability. This little area here is his fatigue meter. It starts at 13 and goes down. Um, to zero. You can obviously still leave them in beyond that. Um, relievers are automatically set at six. Um, let's see. This will show you the at-bat results for each player at the bottom. So to roll, I clicked on the clock to start the game and then you click here to roll or hit your enter button on your keyboard. And Al Bombri strikes out. All you have to do is click out so this is a player user driven um, scoreboard. You have to enter the results. It's kind of like playing a tabletop game and I kind of wanted to incorporate it that way. There's charts that come up. You have to read the charts, determine the outcome, and enter the results. Now the results might be an F8 or a strikeout or it could be a ground out, but either way you just enter out and it'll record it. If I go to the box, you'll see that it's recorded a strikeout. Roll again for Andres Mora. Ground out to second. Remy Stennett has it. It's an out. Reggie Jackson's up. Foul ball. 
is one of the charts that comes up. It rolls the dice automatically. 65. It's a foul out. Um, old parks and new parks. Old parks, I'd consider 1955 um, forward new parks and order 1955 old parks, but you can use whichever column you want. So it's a foul out. And all I do is click on out. And you can see in the box score it registers an FO for fly out. Uh, foul out. Fly outs will have F7, F8, F9. Okay, so we've switched. Jim Palmer's now on the mound. Lamar Marino's at bat. And there's a single. So I'm going to hit um, single up here, or you could hit S on the keyboard for single. D for double, T for triple, H for home run. And that equates to these same clicks up here. Whenever a player walks, you want to make sure you hit base on balls up here or hit uh, W on the keyboard. So you can hit uh, the enter button or click here to roll. There's a single runner's advance one base. You can see that uh, Omar Marino is fast, which equates to his running speed. When I click single, it's going to automatically advance the runner one base on a single and two for a double. If he was to advance two bases on that single, it'll tell you down here. And here's how you move him the extra base. This is how you move runners. You always work with the most um, runner that's furthest around the bases first. Never do it the other way. So I'll just click on two and it advances him from two to three. That was if he advanced two bases. Ground ball shortstop. Mark's got it. It's a double play. So for a double play, you just hit out, and to register the extra out, you do it over here. Don't hit it here because it'll advance to the next batter. This is for extra outs, like on double plays. So you get your extra out. And then I, I want to eliminate this runner because he was out in the double play. I just click on it, and you can see he's gone. We only have a runner on third, which is really on second. Now he's on third after the double play, so there you go. Willie really Stargill's up. He strikes out. I don't have to do anything but hit out, and you can see that it registered as a strikeout. Uh, we'll just do a couple more results here. There's a fly ball. It's an out. Sometimes you can take a chance if there's a runner on base, um, and another chart will come up over here, and you can try to advance the runner based on his speed against the fielder's rating, whether he makes it or not on tag. Base on balls, right here. Ground ball, fielder's choice, batter safe. So I'm going to do out, and I'm going to advance the runner since it was a fielder's choice. Oh, I'm sorry, he, he's out at second, so I take him off, and I put Brooks Robinson on first by clicking right here. This is how you control the base runners. Because it was a fielder's choice, Brooks made it to first. And you can see it enters fielder's choice in there for Brooks. They dunk in two outs, and it's a single runner to second. And there's a strikeout. Bill Robinson, single. Bill Madlock, double runner on first scores. So I will register a double to get him to score. I simply click here, and it adds it to the score, and it'll give him an RBI, which is the asterisk. This is another one of the charts. Jim Palmer, level B pitcher versus head hot, bats left. So we have a split situation. The meter ends up here, which is within the out range of Jim Palmer in a split situation, so it's an out. This is where you can take a chance. We already have a fly out to center field. If I wanted to try to advance Omar Marino against the center fielder, Al Bumbry, I could click right here. You can see the outfielder's range and the runner's range. And if it was within this range of the runner, he'd have been safe. But he's out. So we have a fly out and an extra out because he got thrown out. Clear the runner here. Um, you can also try to bunt, hit and run, or long ball. Or go for the long ball. You'll get more strikeouts if you swing for defense. Sometimes you'll get normal results, but you'd have a tendency to either get a long ball or more strikeouts. So this one's a pop out to the shortstop. Pop out the second base, Al Bumbry, there's a double, 
trying to see if I can get a long ball chart to come up. Maybe some ball. I'm going to keep rolling just to see if I can get... Okay, here's another chart, foul ball. We've, we've been over this one. Here we go. Here's the long ball chart. So, you don't have any automatic home runs. You have deep flies and you have long balls. And the uh, when you have the deep flies or the long balls, you'll have a chart that comes up with another roll of the dice. And you can see that Reggie got a home run on this. So I can hit H on my keyboard or um, hit home run right here. So, okay. That's all the sample play I'm going to do for right now because I, I want to show you a couple other things. Uh, to do a pitching change, um, there are a couple other charts that come up. One of them is it'll put you in pitch by pitch mode um, just a couple times a game and a grid will come up here and you click on it and you'll do pitch by pitch and you'll see balls and strikes come in. It only takes a couple seconds. You can play a whole game in like 12 minutes with this thing if you wanted to. Um, so there's pitch by pitch mode is one of the charts you have not seen yet. Let's see. Pitching change. Say I wanted to take fly 11 out. Click on the little reset arrows here and make sure that you are not on the other team, otherwise you'll be changing the picture of the other team. This is a getcha area. For the home team, make sure you're on the year for that team and the team that you want. And then go to pitchers and then check your you can check out your relievers here and pick who you want to come in and then hit OK. And as soon as you remove a pitcher, the stats will be entered in the box score area for the pitcher that was in there. Okay, I only have three minutes left on this uh, video. So I wanted to talk about sometimes on my other computer that when you zoom in to get a bigger display, it um, kind of messes up because you're trying to see it and you can't and, because it's a smaller screen. And it was kind of hard to develop it. To fit everybody's computer, so I made these elements so that they're movable. So you can move the cards around if you have to zoom in, so that um, you can see your screen on smaller displays. Hey, here's that pitch by pitch mode. When you go into pitch by pitch mode, you click on the screen, and you can see it has a ball. And this program is evaluating the pitchers. Um, level, their control, their uh, strikeout ratio. It's also looking at the batter's averages, uh, home runs, extra bases, whether it's a lefty or righty situation. And it's for every element you're seeing here, that's all being considered. So we got a 3 0 count. Up, oh, there's a strike. And he drew the walk. So Lee May gets uh, to first base. Um, so anyway, you can drag these elements around. You can also move the charts around. And what will happen is the next time that um, any of the charts come up, once you move them, once you move a chart on the screen, like this one just came up, say I wanted it to be right here. When this goes away, it'll come back in the last spot that you um, had it. So anyway, just wanted to make the point that these cards are movable. Um, and when we get to the next inning, the other pitching card will come up, so you'll have to move it over there. So you have a visitor card and a pitcher and a home pitching card. All right, one minute left. Let's see what else I can get in here. Um, yeah, that's pretty much everything. Okay, so the ballparks are right here, by the way. I wanted to just show you these. Uh, let me zoom back out. So you can have a ballpark, or you can go with the default pictures. I kind of like some of these ballparks. Uh, Yankee Stadium's a good one. Okay, so I'm going to have to end this video in a few seconds, but I just wanted to go over some of the major things with this new electronic scoreboard that I'm calling Long Ball. And I'll take any questions online that you might have um, on the forums. Thanks.